Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple of very fun and easy Easter cards. So I'm starting with Honeybee Stamps uh, Easter Basket Builder Stamp Set and Coordinating Die Set. I had several requests to show how this little Easter basket comes together. It's one of those things, once you see it once, it's very, very simple. So there's two stamps. There's the main Easter basket, and then there's this funny little um, partial stamp. And what makes this work is the coordinating wafer die set. So there's two basket wafer dies, one that coordinates with the full basket image, and then this other wafer die that coordinates with this partial stamp. So I use the wafer dies just to make sure that I didn't stamp the partial image too high so I can die cut it. And then I'm just going to heat emboss this onto some craft cardstock. And by craft, I mean Nina Desert Storm cardstock, because that's my just go-to craft cardstock. So I have the images in my Misty here, and I use my anti-static powder tool, brushed off the excess, inked up the stamps with clear embossing ink, and then I'm going to coat these with some detail white embossing powder. And then once I have these coated, I'm just going to set them aside for a minute, and I'm going to just stamp a second set because why not do more than one when I'm sitting here. So exact same process, cardstock, anti-static powder, brush off the excess, ink up the stamps with clear embossing ink, coat it with the detail white embossing powder. And then once these have the embossing powder on them and I've tapped off the excess, I will let my heat tool heat up a little bit and then I will um, heat these images until they are smooth and shiny and melted and when it comes to heat embossing I've had people ask that's like what you know what embossing powders are using mine don't do this mine are very flat like they don't leave a raised image do not overheat that is pretty much the number one reason if your images are not raised and shiny you've overheated them and you can't bring it back after it's been overheated but literally the minute they turn like glossy and then like the powder's melted take the heat away it's done. If you keep heating and it doesn't take much, it just goes flat and because it soaks into the cardstock and very matte and it's it's just done for. So hopefully that helps. So you could leave it as is, but I wanted to add a very simple ink blending just to give it that little bit of dimension. So I'm using some of my Wendy Vecchi Make, make Art inks today. Um, Distress inks would work, Distress Oxides, uh, Ink on Threes, Atelier inks, any of them would, you know, any just dye ink would work. So I just blended on a little bit of acorn ink with a blending brush. I didn't do it fancy. Um, the back image, you're not gonna see that bottom part, you know, where it's all messy with the ink. And then I die cut them after as an ink blending with coordinating dyes. And then you just stack them together and there's your little basket, super simple. So having that second wafer die, it's meant to like line up perfectly like that. So you have the entire, you know, front and, and inside of the basket with all the little detail. It's super cute. You don't always have to use that though, depending on what you're putting in the little basket, basically. There's some larger like florals in the set and whatnot that would just cover that up anyway. So it just depends, but I thought I would show this. You can kind of see it at the end, but Again, it just depends on what you're gonna, you know, fill your little basket with. So I went with the little eggs in the set because they're adorable. So I arranged them onto, I just have like, you know, random scraps of white cardstock. So I arranged them onto this white cardstock, again, inside my Misty, and I spaced them apart purposely so that I have a little bit of space in between so that I can do some ink blending and not have to worry about um, the colors of each one overlapping. And then same process, anti-static powder tool, etc. inking it with clear ink. This time I'm heat embossing with clear embossing powder. You can do either or. You could stick with the white embossing powder. It, in the end, it doesn't make the biggest difference. Using clear just gives it a little bit more of a subtle look. But white embossing powder on white cardstock and or clear on white, in the end, it's, it's very similar. So whatever floats your boat. But I just chose clear just because. <laughs> so I did this all twice, like stamp those eggs. And in the end, I actually did it a couple more times. So I had extra eggs because I ended up like wanting to just add more. So after they were heat embossed, again, very simple ink blending. Literally 
just super simple. Just using kind of a rainbow of colors. So pink, orange, yellow, um, green. I went with more of an aqua blue because I just love the color and a purple. And I just went along and inked up each of the leg. Again, not worrying about how it looks because this is all going to be die cut, you know, so the, the way the ink looks outside of the little egg image is completely irrelevant. So I just went along and ink blended these. Really, really simple. So this is something like you could just do a whole bunch of really because there's no intricate coloring. If you didn't want to do ink blending, you could white heat emboss the images just onto scraps of color cardstock, like just rainbow scraps of cardstock or whatever colors you want to use and skip the ink blending altogether. And, you know, I just decided to do the ink blending because I thought it would just give it just kind of that softer look. And after I was done the ink blending, I did wipe over the images with just my microfiber cloth. That just removes any of the ink sitting on top of the embossed images because it just kind of resists the ink. And that also brings out the image a little bit more because it removes any ink that's like sitting there, kind of obscuring it a little bit. So I quickly rubbed over it with the cloth and then I used the coordinating little wafer dies. I like that this set has a bunch of these egg wafer dies in it. So I can do all the die cutting at once. I don't have to like die cut one at a time, at a time, at a time, like, you know, over and over again. That just gets annoying sometimes. <laughs> so I die cut all my eggs. And then I grabbed a scrap of dark brown cardstock. This was originally why I pulled out the clear embossing powder. So I've got the scrap of dark brown cardstock, anti-static powder, um, brushed off the excess, and then I'm inking up the bunny stamp from the set with that clear embossing ink. And then I'm gonna emboss these with clear embossing powder because I was thinking chocolate bunnies. So just a fun little way to incorporate that. So coated them with that clear embossing powder and then I'll melt that with my heat tool. And then off camera, I will die cut these with the coordinating wafer die. So I've got some little chocolate bunnies I can stick into each of these little baskets and then extras for the inside as well. That's also why I did more eggs off camera because I wanted some for the basket and the front of the card and then some for the inside as well. So I have my basket. Um, all I did was add a little bit of liquid glue around like the perimeter of the bottom and a bit to the handle and left everything else unglued because you don't need very much glue but also it made it easier to kind of tuck in all my little eggs and my little chocolate bunny so I made sure to kind of still leave a little bit of that inner portion of the basket like the back um, showing just to finish the little look of it and I used little bits of liquid glue here and there and then also just a bit of washi tape to hold everything in place because you're not going to see the washi tape and then for my card front I used the quatrefoil wafer dies. There's the cover plate, which is the top, and then the base, which has all the piercing detail. And I just die cut them from some sea glass cardstock. And then the cover plate piece here, I just added bits of the liquid adhesive, just kind of around the perimeter, and then dots in the center. I didn't worry about the very edges because I actually trimmed this down, which for me is not something I do very often. I just... Generally, when it comes to these A2 cover dies, I just use them as is. <laughs> but I wanted to trim it down just so it, I can have a bit of the card base framed around it. So after I adhered it, I just trimmed off the edge, like about an eighth of an inch off of each edge. And then that way it'll be nicely framed. We'll see when I adhere it to my card base. And then all my little, my basket and all the little pieces, I'm just adhering with some thin 3D foam squares, sometimes stacking them, just to give things a bit of dimension. I'd also um, clear heat embossed the little bow from the set onto just another scrap of white cardstock and blended that purple ink onto it. Just the bow was so cute. I just, I needed to incorporate it. Plus I just really love that purple shade of ink. That's the uh, cactus flower um, of the Wendy Becky inks. So I did that. And then off camera, I also heat embossed sentiments from the Hoppy Easter set onto some black cardstock. And I had die cut them with the coordinating wafer dies. So then I'm adhering some of the sentiments to the front of the card. So it says, wishing you a happy Easter. And my card base is just a top folding A2 white cardstock. So I adhered my card front to the card base. And then on the inside of the card, I have another sentiment from the Hoppy Easter set, 
the second bunny and then the remaining eggs. So I'm just going to kind of adhere those along the inside of the card and then I'll adhere the sentiment like just right below that and it just kind of works nicely so that the inside of the card says may your heart be full of love and your basket be full of chocolate hence the chocolate bunnies <laughs> so I got those adhered and then as a final little bit of embellishment I pulled out some Nouveau drops just white and black simple I just kind of wanted to give a little extra something so I applied my Nouveau drops I like to thwack my cards either on my desk or on here I'm just this closed ink pad this helps kind of smooth out the Nouveau drops a bit flattens them a tiny bit smooths them out a bit so did that with the white and then same thing added just a little bit of the black not too much just just a little bit so added those same thing tapped them really good smoothed everything out and then set these aside to dry and then once they're dry these cards are complete so I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list with links to everything I used. So you can check that out in the description box below the video if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs up and commenting all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye.